Hello, I'm Ivan Vankov and in this video I will try to explain what a chain code is and what policies are and how they are related uh, to a channel and to Hyperledger Fabric in general. So, what is the chain code? The chain code is smart contract. In the context of Hyperledger Fabric, the smart contract is called chain code. So, it's an application, it's a program that is written and the main responsibility of that program is to read and update the ledger data. In general, all of uh, your business logic is inside the chain code. So, uh, when you execute the operation, the SDK make a proper transaction and this transaction actually is sent to the peer. Uh, and the peer is doing his job and executing the chain code. So, currently, the chain code can be written in Golang, but uh, implementation for Java and uh, JavaScript are uh, underway. So, after a couple of months, they will be available. Uh, I'm pretty sure that at the end of se September, uh, JavaScript will be available, but uh, uh, don't uh, quote me on that. Uh, but soon, uh, Java and JavaScript also will be uh, available. So, that's the main idea. The only thing that can manipulate or read the ledger and the blockchain is the chain code. And uh, Go is really good language, really powerful language, and you are not limited of uh, what you can use. You can use external libraries, algorithms, data structures, any type of business logic that you want. So you can create a really complex logic. You can read the data from the ledger, uh, take data from certificate to, for example, to take the, uh, the, the row of that, uh, of that user or any additional data and based on that to create uh, any specific uh, business logic. And that's the main idea of the chain code. And actually, if you are a little more technical, uh, the, 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 writing, the, the writing of the chain code is quite simple because you have just a couple of uh, operation, uh, operations that you can use. For example, you, you can execute, uh, let me find, put, for example, let's see the interface that define actually the chain code. So you have get args, which takes the arguments that are part of, part of the transaction, uh, get transaction ID for other purposes, but uh, you can get state, which will bring you the some value from the ledger, or put state that will update some value, or delete state, for example. Uh, you can execute range queries, etc., etc., etc. So actually, uh, if you uh, are f uh, if you understand how this method uh, methods work uh, with their limitation in specific uh, specific um, uh, uh, cases, uh, you will be able to uh, write this uh, chain code. So, uh, actually, the chain code must be part of a channel. That's really important because one chain code is responsible for working with the ledger, but the ledger is inside the channel. So, the chain code must be inside the channel. And inside one channel, you may have different chain codes, as much as you want. And when uh, you make a request, you say, okay, I want to execute an uh, operation uh, on that channel, in that chain code, with these parameters, with this certificate. So actually, you can uh, uh, r um, define your business logic in completely different ways. Uh, uh, completely different ways. You may have one chain code that handles all of your business needs, Okay, it's not a problem if that's appropriate for you. Or you can separate your uh, business logic in 5, 10, 12 uh, different uh, chain codes and actually um, implement specific business logic. And depending on the execution, the operation, uh, you just uh, invoke, uh, invoke, uh, invoke uh, sorry, uh, you just invoke different uh, chain code. So that's the main idea of the chain code. Uh, the chain code actually uh, has to be installed and later instantiate. So, when you write the chain code, you have to install it on every single peer that is part of that channel. So, if you have three peers that are part of the same channel, you have to install the chain code in every single peer. This can be done uh, using the SDKs or manually uh, by using the peer itself. So, uh, this can be automated quite easily. Uh, the main idea here is uh, because the, the chain code is working with the, the, the physical, the actual ledger data, and the actual ledger data is inside the peer, uh, the chain code must be part of the peer. So you have to install it inside the peer. Uh, if you have three peers that are part of the same channel, but you install the chain code only to, to two peers, the third peer will give error or will not be part of the endorsement, depending how you implemented it. But uh, in general, it will work 
but this peer uh, will not be able to update or read information from the from this particular channel so it will be useless because you cannot add <laughs> you cannot take anything from it so that's the first step you write your chair uh, your chain code and then you install it after installing it you have to instantiate it so uh, when you install it nothing's ha nothing's happened it's just sit there but it's not usable when you instantiate the chain code it will actually start the container of the chain code will uh, make all the necessary connections security verification etc etc and then this chain code is uh, ready for use but when you create the instantiate you have to provide a policy so what is the policy endorsement policy this is really really a uh, powerful uh, idea so when you execute some operation this operation uh, has to be verified before it's uh, written inside the ledger it must be verified and you can create the policy that say before you update that i want every single peer of the network to verify that transaction before committing or you can create a logic as majority of the peers to uh, verify that or majority uh, plus one specific or at least one so actually you can create any boolean logic using and and or you can say okay i want uh, this to be valid uh, uh, request uh, any member of organization one and any member of organization two and any member of organization three to verify that this operation is valid that security is okay that the uh, the, the certificate attributes uh, provenance uh, validity etc etc is valid and only and only if this rule is applied then the operation will be executed and this policy can be changed and these policies are per chain code so if you have a channel that has 10 different uh, chain codes every single chain code has different policy so for example you may split your business logic uh, uh, and let's say something that is not so um, so important you can say okay uh, any member any valid member uh, is um, able actually to execute that but if you have a business logic that is really serious for example you transfer some money and only particular uh, users can do that you can enforce even more the, the, the security by applying uh, a strong policy that, for example, every single member of the network is agreed that this operation is valid. Endorsements are quite powerful thing and they, they really make sense when you work in an uh, environment with multiple organizations, with multiple parties. If you are a single organization, uh, then I don't see the real benefits from them, uh, but when you have couple of parties inside the network a couple of organizations then they're priceless uh, because they actually um, enforce even more the trust and solve many problems so uh, it will be more clear for you uh, in the next video when i will try to explain the endorsement process and the simulation and then um, this whole idea will just fit inside your brain uh, like a piece of the same puzzle but just to know uh, that this is really powerful too and you cannot have a chain code without a policy uh, currently in the current version you have uh, you have the null policy but this will be changed soon so let's recap the whole structure you have the peer the peer may be part of one or many channels every single channel has separate ledger every channel may have one or many chain codes and every single chain code has a different policy so this is the model and this model is really, really flexible and can fit in practically any scenario. So this is the channels and this is the endorsement policy. In the next video, I will try to explain you what endorsement actually means and why it's so important and uh, why simulation of the transaction is so important and how uh, everything fit together with the orderer, with, uh, with the peers, with the channels, with the chain code, etc., etc. Thank you.